welcome to Pastor Wives Chat. I'm excited to be back and I'm so grateful and thrilled to be able to join, be joined here by my longtime friend and now co-laborer here at Buckram Baptist Church. This is Debbie Parks. Debbie is the wife of Dave Parks, who is our one of our lay pastors and Sunday school teachers here. Extraordinary Sunday school teacher. I hear him teach. And he's one of our guys who sing out when they <laughs> when they worship. I, I love that. But you guys have been here since 2017, if I'm right. Is that right? That sounds right. It was three years in July, I believe. Okay. Two right. years or three yeah, years. Right, all right. And um, so when Debbie and Dave joined, they jumped in with both feet and uh, just began to love the worship, love being part of the church, and I loved watching you guys just soak it all in and soak mm -hmm. in the fellowship of Buck Run, and Absolutely. there's just a sweetness to it. But uh, ministry isn't new to Debbie. <laughs> you have, you grew up, right, in a pastor's home. Absolutely, yes. So you, you were born, your dad was a pastor when you were born. yes. And so was there ever a time that you were not in ministry? Like, was Dave in ministry when you married him? He was already pastoring when we married. Okay. But I will confess to the fact that I had seen the life of a pastor's wife uh -huh. firsthand, of course. Uh -huh. And so I wasn't really interested. Were you not? <laughs> it was I, I, I wanted to be in a kind of ministry, in fact, what I'm doing, teaching uh -huh. children. Uh -huh. But uh, I, I thought I would be content being an old maid school teacher. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, the Lord had different plans for me, and he's, he sent me along a different kind of preacher, uh -huh. and, and I couldn't have been happier. Yes, yeah, so, so where did Dave uh, pastor when you met? He was pastoring uh, Berea Baptist Church in Hidden Night, North Carolina. Mm. And he had just finished school a year or so before and had pastored there part-time, I think, even his last year of school. Mm. So, yeah, he was already pastoring, and I had to jump into that with both feet. So you moved to North Carolina then? To, to North Carolina. To the, and then after that was... Thompson Road the next step or was there something in between there? Actually no we spent a couple of years in Greentown Ohio and um, my goodness the name of the church is not coming to me I start meant to tell you ahead of time that feel free to supply words for me sometimes okay. my brain just doesn't <laughs> no, work no <laughs> mine either <laughs> so we, we were in uh, North Canton Ohio is where we lived uh -huh. the parsonage was for two years when our children were taller and infant mm. we went there when Jonathan was eight weeks old mm. so uh, it was it was a hectic time but you know it was a good time together as a family he had a little more time to be with us and and we enjoyed the time mm -hmm. raising the babies yeah. together they were 16 months apart so wow yeah mom were mom were 21 months apart and that was enough to just you, it's all hands on deck when uh, they're that age difference. But 16 months is like really Yeah, tricky. of course. I've <laughs> known people who've done it closer. Uh, yes, so. yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, and I even knew somebody who had a child uh, and that was uh, nine months old, found out she was expecting with triplets. <gasps> so can you even oh imagine? No, I know. All right, you, you would know them if I, if I mentioned them. So oh, okay. you, basically you've been in ministry then nonstop your, your whole Pretty life. Much. You served, you guys served in Lexington. I'm going to come back to that ministry because I know some stuff that you did there that um, just was such a blessing to the community of Lexington. It moved outside the walls of your church. And so that, that sings my song. That's really something precious to me. But I, Okay, so you mentioned your kids. Let's, let's tell me a little bit about them. All right, our oldest is a daughter, our only daughter. Her name is Joy. In fact, she is Joy Elise, which is Joy Promised from God. I love it. All of our children have names like that. Yeah. That she is, uh, I don't guess she'd mind me tell her age. She's a little over 40. Uh -huh. She lives in Columbus. She teaches special education in Columbus, Ohio, and is fairly close to her brother in, who lives in Marysville and mm -hmm. right now is providing support for them. Mm -hmm. She has her undergraduate degree in theater, so she has a voice like her dad and mm. all these wonderful speaking skills. And, um, and so like you, on the spectrum, this is Dave, this is Debbie, <laughs> and uh -huh. then everything comes in between <laughs> that. 
the, bo the body and volume of your husband's yes. voice is so, mm -hmm. he's just a good preacher voice. You yes, know. exactly. Oh. And she has the same gift and, and a lot of special training, of course, on how to use it. But uh, Columbus has a an improv theater community, mm -hmm. which is where she can stay involved in theater. Um, after hours, after school yeah. hours, and so it, it is her first love, How but cool. she has been also training some in a program mm -hmm. where they work with students with autism in improv to help them use social skills and language okay, skills. Okay, so this is precious because, tell us now about your son. Yes, our, okay. our middle son uh -huh. is Jonathan, and Jonathan is does have autism. Uh -huh. And uh, he so is was, that what joy is? Do you think that's that obviously seemed to spark? I think uh, that's part of it. I also think that teacher gifts just oh, okay. seem to mm -hmm. be part of our family. Mm -hmm. So I think she had teacher gifts. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I, um, it's interesting that I have a niece who grew up with Jonathan, who is a pediatric speech therapist, and a niece who grew up with Jonathan, who is a physical therapist. So I think that you know, yes. uh, experiences with people with, it, with differences may have sparked some of mm -hmm. their, you know, mm -hmm. job choice. But Jonathan was a delightful little child. Mm -hmm. And then shortly after he turned two, he started to lose his speech. Mm -hmm. And um, the Lord had sent me to do volunteer work as a teenager mm -hmm. at Cardinal Hill Hospital where I met my first autistic child. Wow. So I felt like I saw the symptoms. I saw the symptoms then, but because of the uh, era, autism was not diagnosed. Oh, right, exactly. Unless you didn't talk at all. Right, that's right. And so we did everything we could to get early intervention. He started talking again, but his understanding of language is different. Just the way his brain processes right. language and... Um, Everything is different, and so it's been it's been quite a journey. And we are blessed that he's very hardworking. Mm -hmm. People say to me, you know, you know, we knew he was going to be all right, and I said, you know, I want to say you don't know how hard he's worked, right? And he still does. Right. Still, still spend lots of hours talking to Jonathan. Sure. You might need to say that to people instead of just wanting, <laughs> you know, so yeah. people understand that right. it's, you know, it's not without the cost, right? Uh, that everybody comes along and sort of uh, provides. And what yeah. a blessing, though, that his that you've been able to know how to shepherd specifically the heart of his. Well, yeah. and that's, you know, that was really my purpose mm -hmm. during my children's childhood. I wanted to stay home with them anyway, mm -hmm. but it took so much research and so much time mm -hmm. to find strategies that helped him in mm -hmm. so many ways he needed. He had a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. a lot of children act out big. Jonathan would curl up in a ball when mm -hmm. he got because of nervousness and anxiety. Right. And, you know, just researching, trying diets. Yes, yeah, so this was before, things. like, you could just Google anything. Oh. And just, I mean, it's like when you say research. We're talking about, uh, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. will say that the preschool we got him into uh -huh. that was a, 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 a special needs preschool. They did give me some direction mm -hmm. on some books and things to read, but it was even hard to find the books. Sure. The books were not popular, and what Jonathan's initial diagnosis was was Asperger's syndrome, mm -hmm. which was not even recognized in the United States. It was not even recognized in the United States until about 10 years later. Wow. It was diagnosed in Europe, but not in the United mm -hmm. States. Again, because they talked, and right. so they couldn't have it be on the autism spectrum. Right because they talked. So it was it was a really challenging thing, but also, you know, my passion. And yeah, uh, right. the, you know, I, I've told him numerous times, I said, Jonathan, the Lord gave you to me because he knew I would do what I needed to do to take care of you. Yes. That right. I would not choose to punish you or, yeah. you know, do things because you didn't right. respond normally. Right. And so, you know, I know that with all my heart. Absolutely. I know it with all my heart. 
I see, I see the goodness of the Lord. It's yeah, just, in that. Amazing. So, you know, he's got wow. a remarkable understanding of the scripture, a <laughs> remarkable memory for the mm-hmm. scripture, but he breaks down in nerves and breaks out in the sweat when he's in a congregation, mm. you know. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, he's, he struggles with, with needing that support and uh-huh. needing friendships right. a lot. But, you know, uh, oh, you know, you just thank the Lord. Yeah. When they explain the Bible to you, you just love it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. Yeah. So, anyway, he's he's well, he's been a challenge but a joy. And then you, so you have... A boy and a girl. You have two boys, right? Yes, I have okay. one more son, and he's the youngest. And he lives in Marysville, Ohio, with his wife, who uh, is in public health. Mm-hmm. She works at the health department there. And the reason they ended up there is that this, a program through the CDC mm-hmm. placed her in a job there. And they have a wonderful little town to live in and uh, uh, a wonderful home and environment. And uh, Ben does computer, all right, let me get it right. He writes the code. Oh, He's wow. not a web designer. Uh-huh. He's yeah. a web so. producer. Okay. I think that's what mm-hmm. he is. And he writes the code for, I was listening to him. I've listened to him on phone calls and things when he's working online. And he he speaks a foreign language. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'd be, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm getting better at computer stuff, but it's not, it's not a, something that I love doing I do it out of necessity so therefore I'm just like yeah yeah, just set me up where I can just do this but all right so um let's let's sort now let me talk about your education because I know you went where'd you go to high school then I went to Tate's Creek High School in Lexington and then for college you went to I attended the University of Kentucky and studied elementary and special education did you go right into um college or like I guess what I'm getting at was having children did that prompt what you studied or did you decide this long before you no you know it, it's one thing that it's such a blessing to be as old as I am mm-hmm. and you look back and see the hand of God in those things isn't that the truth because um you know again at the time I entered college I was still going to be an old maid school teacher uh-huh and so uh, I hadn't given much thought to any children even let alone wow. realize wow. I was <laughs> studying what I would need to raise my children. <laughs> and so, you know, again, my wonderful mother was always carrying me to volunteer work, and she carried me to volunteer work with, with inner city kids, uh-huh. and then she carried me to volunteer work at Cardinal Hill Hospital. And I just fell in love, first thing, in yeah. love with a child with autism. Yeah. Were you a candy striper? I was not a candy striper. My husband thinks that. He gets confused all the time. So you've probably been talking to my head cheerleader. Well, (laughs) he is a fan extraordinaire, and that's precious. But they had those at hospitals. I didn't know if they had them at Cardinal Hill or not. You know, they may have. I don't remember seeing At Cardinal Hill, what they did was have us work in recreation therapy. Okay. So we played with them in ways that increased their development. Mm-hmm. And the first time I went there was for a summer camp. Mm-hmm. And um, so there was there were a lot of outdoor and fun activities uh-huh. to do. But this child, I noticed, no, he didn't participate. Uh-huh. And so I began to take him by the hand and lead him into activities. And, and you know, we had an interesting summer. He was echolalic, meaning mm-hmm. he would right. only speak back to you what you said to him. Right. But by the end of the summer... I could ask him questions, he can answer him. Uh, I trained him in certain questions. So we just kind of had a little breakthrough, and his mother was so excited. She says, he's never come home from camp before, you know. And, right. and it was just the hand of the Lord again. It is, man. Do you, you know? He does not waste a thing. I know. I, I mean, mean, that, that <laughs> I mean, not a thing that That's, enters our life yeah, and so is I'm, not going to exit with some fruitful opportunity. Is that not just amazing? That I know, the Lord's and, that, so good and then that that's where I committed to, at that time, special ed- education or physical therapy. And I just realized at one point I didn't really have the health mm. to do physical therapy. And I, you know, I asked the Lord, you want me to take bodies or minds? And <laughs> I took minds. There you go. <laughs> well, I, I got to go back to something because it's really cute that uh, in the South, they say, uh, carry me instead of, 
brought me or uh -huh. took me. They carried me to the store. You used, yes. I like it that your yes. mom used that phrase. Therefore, pass that down to you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Kentucky keeps going <laughs> with our with our own insider language. But yeah. you, um, so you work in Lexington, and yes. what is it? What what do you do there? <clears throat> I am a para educator, which is another wonderful word mm -hmm. at Garden Springs Elementary School, and. Um, we go alongside children from the special education classroom to the regular classroom and support them there mm -hmm. and provide necessary adaptations for them to be learning in the in the normal environment many many of them can mm -hmm. with the with the appropriate adaptations it is good for them to have good models mm -hmm. see what other people right, are doing right. the right way and it is good for the other people to learn to not be afraid of differences. Absolutely. To be kind and accepting to people with differences. Right. So it's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful opportunity. Not for all. Yes. Not all are able. Right. But it has been a delight to me because I could take the knowledge and experience I had and go to work without being the lead teacher. Mm. And <clears throat> having all the preparation, all the meetings. And so I was able to go back to work doing that. I think our youngest was hmm, maybe third grade or mm -hmm. so when I went back to mm -hmm. doing that. And I don't believe I could have ever mm -hmm. carried the teacher load yeah. and been the mom I needed to be. Well, so it was in the Lord's hands. It's, and per it's perfect, and, and you get to do what you're passionate about and what the Lord has gifted you in. So how long have you done this? Uh, about 22 years. At the, have you been at the same school? I've or? been at the same school. No kidding. Another act of God, if I may say. Right. A dear friend of mine taught there and told the principal they had a student who needed somebody similar to my Jonathan. Wow. And she said, my friend's just applied. She said, it'd be a mistake if you didn't interview her. A pastor's wife in Lexington also worked at that school and said to that principal, she would be great. Uh -huh. She could do this job. Uh -huh. This principal was a deacon of a Baptist church. <laughs> wow. You just like the Lord just laid your so path So the Lord out. just made me this job <laughs> and these wonderful people to work with. Yeah. That's just and so... <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, it's it's been it's it, there have been times it's been very stressful, but it is it, it's a perfect fit mm -hmm. in in so many ways. And yeah. I'm just so thankful for well, it. Well, so. I feel that the Lord did that same thing with you and Dave, bringing you here to Buck Run, and how you're a perfect fit for even the needs we have special needs here. Right. And so here at Buck Run, what do you do? So. Well, here at, at Buck Run, I prepare the lessons for the special needs class. I teach when they let me, but there's so many wonderful people. Is who it want not to incredible? Take, I mean, that want to, yes. Really? I yeah. mean, you know, we say we want to do this, and we have a, we have a pediatric PT, and we have a pediatric nurse, and we have um, a preschool. Speech, and yeah, yeah, we have just, all these people right. show up, you know, and they just can't wait to jump on the wagon. Yeah to you know to be uh -huh. involved in caring for these children so i prepare the lessons and most of the material mm -hmm. and send it out to them by email during the week so they can prepare and you're and this is not new stuff for you you've been writing like you even did like vacation bible school material like for your own church when I you did were back in because, lexington yeah mm -hmm. and that's another interesting thing because we were purchasing scene material and the children of inner city children were so different mm -hmm. than what the material was prepared for. I was spending so much time and money adapting that material. Okay, pa pause this because I want to back up here. Uh, so Debbie and Dave served in a inner city area. It was a, it was a rough part of town, just right. to be real. And yeah. um, you guys served there for a long time. And I believe, if I'm correct, you, uh, you were always writing vacation Bible school things, but didn't you did something community-wise with kids, right? Like inter I w I'm interested in that. Uh, well, on a weekly basis, you know, we had uh, both Sunday morning and Sunday evening uh -huh. worship time for children. Sunday school, Sunday morning worship, Sunday evening. And gradually I prepared all of that uh -huh. so that we were teaching through the Bible chronologically. We talked through the Bible chronologically. 
if I may, I'd love to mention my teaching partner, Janie Luncher. Please do. Who was with me all those years yeah. and jumped in with both feet no matter what fire I had pointed out. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> that, That's great. Uh, we, we prepared that, and then we would I would typically prepare a meal on Sunday night and carry it to church with me. And we would invite them. Many of them weren't well fed. Mm. And so, oh, not for yourself, for the no, for the children. Okay, for the no, I fed the children every week. Taught the children twice, and I mean, Janie usually take one segment, and uh -huh. we would. We had a wonderful room that we kept full of activities that were Bible related, but also gave children opportunities to learn in different ways. Mm -hmm. So like there was always a, I'm losing my equipment here. I, uh, there was always a, an area where I had a Bible scene. We might have a tent when it was Abraham. Oh. We might have, <laughs> yeah. we had a Nile River. Whoops. It's all right, we'll pause it. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have a Nile River in costumes when it was Moses and uh -huh. I always had a basket and babies and uh -huh. we had an area like that so we could always act out the story because when you study education, the top of the cone of learning is, is acting out, right. role playing. Right. And down at the bottom is hearing, yeah. which we depend on so much right. in our instruction. But we let we perceive and keep the littlest percentage of just what we hear right so we have an area like that we have an art area where there'd be an extra art experience now there was always a craft as part of the lesson that i tried to make a something as a retelling uh -huh. so when you took that home you were rehearsing some of what you heard with your craft that was a retelling of right. a story and then there would be uh there would be what I'd call a free art, and then there were things for people who were more students. There was a Bible word center, and mm -hmm. I taught them how to use a concordance. Find that word in a reference and yes. write it in a sentence. And you have no idea, I'm sure, just the um, long-term effects that those little things, uh, like Herschel preached uh, recently and just talked about, you know, the... Um, doing in the ordinary daily life you know how jesus yeah. did the mundane things and really the mundane things um are showing character and shaping character and building cap you know, character in, right. in children especially but the fact that those little nuances are going to not just <clears throat> help them spiritually but in just many areas right and that you know i'm just so grateful the lord brought you to buck run <clears throat> and brought that strategic specific gifting and skill set he's, again he wastes nothing he's yes. gonna he's gonna figure out a way uh, to use all, all of those things and I, I also um, know that like when you interact you, everything you you see not just as like well this isn't just a task to perform you're one of those people who understand there's a big picture behind each task and you know, like everything from your job when you're at school, it's not just a job to you. It's not no. a task that no. you go in and you do your labor. It's a labor of love that that takes beyond the classroom. So do you have, like, do you have anything that takes you, uh, your ministry, even beyond to, like, your classroom experience? Like, your, your calling to what your job is, that, like, you enter, you're able to go beyond that at all? Or is it? Your ministry really does just focus in the church. You understand what? I understand what you're saying, but um, yes, I could. I would say, the very first student I had as a kindergartner, mm -hmm. um, I loved him, and a lot of people had not. Oh. Uh -huh. And by loving him and caring for him, I influenced his mother, who came to Thompson Road and became a church member, and one of the most faithful helpers I ever had. No kidding. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because that really is the point. It is. It's all about. It's big picture. Yes. It's yeah. all about loving and developing people. Yeah. That's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, I, I took my time with that. And In fact, she finally told her when, he, when I finally invited her to church, she says, I didn't know what you were waiting for. <laughs> 
something. So, you know, yeah. there there's been there have been many opportunities like that along the way. Perhaps not to bring them into my church. Sure. But to give people support that they needed, spiritual support that mm -hmm. they needed in child rearing a different kind of child. Yeah. And the Lord gave me that experience. Right. So that I would be prepared to share it with somebody else. Uh -huh. And so uh, in the workplace or here at church or whatever, I love being available for that. Well, I, I mean, it's just, it's clear you like doing it. Okay, so if you're not doing that, mm -hmm. what is it you like to do? Like if you've, if you've got free time, what is it you enjoy doing? I listened to you ask this question and I've laughed about it because a whole lot of what I might do is sit down and invent a craft for children. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, this is not surprising to me. <laughs> but I love to sew and I love to play the piano. I don't do either one as often as I like to, but being closed in during the pandemic, I have sewn quite a lot to mm -hmm. Buck Run Baptist Church video on YouTube while oh, I sew. Yes, great. <laughs> and so it's been really encouraging. What do you like sewing? Do you sew? What do you sew? I, I sew a lot of things, and I just finished a quilt for our new grandbaby. Oh, and I don't do a lot of quilting. This was my first real quilt, but I like to make just simple patchwork quilts. I love to sew gifts. Mm -hmm. I just do. I feel like I put a lot of love into them when mm -hmm. I'm making them. And I've made everything from little car tracks for boys to drive cars on yeah. to doll clothes for little girls and I household items. And it's that. just. I love this. There's a story in the Bible that talks about a, a, a wake for a, a lady who has died. And they come up and everybody shows up with their tunics. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. it, and the minis that ministry obviously is so potent that it, it's not about really their, the tunic itself it's about that that pouring right. your life and giving your gifts and spreading them out and yeah. um, you know we've got several ladies here at church who have done those things and um, pass along those treasures that right. bear with it a, a whole lot of love and and it's more more meaning than just that item right <clears throat> so so it's sweet and so sewing music right you, um and like i say making crafts <laughs> crafts i i even yeah. enjoy the actual writing of bible lessons and uh -huh. and that is probably i mentioned it's a delight to look back on the age you're like it is one thing that's been a goal of mine that i don't feel like i've quite delved into as much as I want to I want to spend a little more time writing mm -hmm. and taking some real actual time to develop my writing but Grant's kind of intimidating you know because there are so many good writers Tell here me. I know but um yeah. I um uh, well let me um, also say that a lot of these really good writers don't think they're good writers too well, they're really it's so like you you know, you probably are a very good writer. Do you want to stick with kids' curriculum, or do you want to branch out and do um, other things? Kids' curriculum, children's books, and... Please do that. Please do children's books. Please do it. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah. Please do, do things like that. I have, I've contemplated it for years. I have two or three things, a couple of things in a research pro progress, and then... I really think it could be helpful if to write a book with Jonathan. That would be great. About how he grew up. And uh -huh. he has such a fantastic memory of his experiences. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that's 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 an intimidating size project. Sure. Sure. So, you know, I, I I hope I can live long enough. <laughs> well, start start now. <laughs> so that way we can, we can ensure that the chances are better. But, yeah, but, I, I do love to create things for kids, though. So Well, I, yeah. I love all this about you. I could talk. I literally could just pick your brain on things like this for hours because, you know, um, it, it's not just about your ability to interact with kids who have challenges in their interaction. You just have the wonderful ability to interact with people. And, you know, that's, that's, a, that's somehow a gifting, but it's also a gifting that you work at, that you understand there is. Mm -hmm. um, it's like by nature, you know, do you just want to go and interact all the time with other people, or are you a homebody? Or 
I am not a super social person as far as seeking uh -huh. people out, but I do like love to get with people one on one. Uh -huh. And I will tell you that these pastors' wives' chats, I have enjoyed them so much because it's given me an opportunity to see into the hearts of these young I know. women. I know. Isn't and it great? you know, I don't I don't really understand them mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. But it's been such a great opportunity to hear where they are, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where they've come from, how they're thinking in their generation. Right. And I'm hoping for opportunities that will give me opportunities to relate to them. Mm -hmm more effectively right. because yes I'm always looking for a way to relate effectively mm -hmm. and be supportive of people mm -hmm. again I just think the Lord gave me the job of you're, developing you're Miss Barnabas <laughs> <laughs> you're the, the, I don't know what the daughter of encouragement would be but you're you're that is an incredible gift and you you have done that for me and to me before we ever came to Buck Run I know you don't have any idea but just when um, you know, I didn't grow up in ministry, new world to me, and I certainly didn't grow up in the circle. So, you know, there's a, the ministry circle, and then there's an inner circle sometimes within those. Mm -hmm. And so I wasn't um, always received as gladly and welcomed as heartily, which is sad. It's really sad. Absolutely. But uh, that was not my experience with you. And you, you know, your eyes lit up with welcome to me uh, from the get-go and that was just a sweet sweet grace and I appreciate you doing that from my personal experience I am delighted <laughs> that you are here and what you bring to it okay so we're we got to move on to that if <laughs> the if oh, thing so you've oh, watched okay. this you know what this okay if you were to travel no restrictions going on where would you go as long as I'm taking D Dave with me, uh -huh. it would be Ireland or Sweden. Or yes, oh, yeah. because we've all there's just something mystical, I know, it looks beautiful, so beautiful, and historic land, about land. it, and and we both have a a leaning toward that. Uh -huh. So I don't know, maybe the Lord will send us one day. You that would know. be so cool. <laughs> oh, I wish He would I, for a visit. There you <laughs> yeah, go. Just yeah. for a visit. Yeah, just, just for, for a visit. visit. Okay. But somebody there might need some help. <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. Well, and this one sort of goes back. But if you're relaxing. What are you doing? If I'm relaxing, I'm probably doing needlework. Are you? Yeah, hand sewing. I'm uh -huh. probably doing okay. needlework. Okay. Um, you, if you could choose a person in the past to share a meal with, who would you choose? A person in the past. All right. Oh, you'll get this one. Alta Hatcher. Oh, yeah. Alta made a tremendous difference in my life by being a called woman of God. I'm telling you, she was strong and meek and mighty. Everything, everything she could be. And, and what I hadn't seen in a lot of women in my life. Yes. And so Alta, you know. You know, they, they write about great women in history, uh, biblical, you know, mm -hmm. um, spiritual women and you know, I, Amy Carmichael's, Elizabeth Elliot's, you know, mm -hmm. I could just go down through the whole list. And uh, Alta Hatcher is on this list. Mm -hmm. And yet she's a very unknown entity. Absolutely. But and man in heaven. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> you know, there yes, are lots of people who know her. They, I was going to say. She made Christ known to a lot of people in a lot of ways. And Absolutely. Can I join you if you have a <laughs> Yes. <laughs> we were, that, that would be so fun. That would be lovely. That would be fun. <laughs> um, I'm going to have to have my friends watch this who are their offspring. Uh, 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 that will be sweet. All right. If I look at your Bible, what would I find the most marked or worn part of your Bible? Okay, I was going to say I have a new Bible that I'm not marking. Yeah. I got one so marked up that... Uh -huh. It distracted me. I understand that. I've that got one of those. Uh, mm -hmm. First John. Mm, first John. First John That's is about good. love and truth. Yeah. It's about love and truth uh -huh. and about the little children learning it. Yeah. This is, that is just your perfect, that, I can picture this. This and, really fits you. And so, you know, that just, we, we love them, but we do not hesitate to tell them the truth. Mm. And that is as much love as anything else we can do. Okay, guys, go back and read. First John's short. You can just go through it, and you'll see yeah. what she's talking about. It's a great, just mull over it. Read it out loud book. You know, yes. it's one of those that do it. All right, and yeah. last one. 
you have a favorite meal before you, what is it? Oh no, this is tough. Let's see. Probably my mom's turkey and dumplings. Mm. So that would be really good, yes. <laughs> Not chicken and dumplings, turkey and dumplings. Turkey, mom did turkey and dumplings and um, yeah, she would make it for birthday dinners because everybody loved it. Uh -huh. Still don't quite have those dumplings down like mom did. Yeah, well, you know. keep practicing. I, try I try I it on us. <laughs> you can try it out on us. <laughs> <laughs> well, Debbie, I hope you enjoyed doing this as much as I enjoyed hearing you, hearing from you, and sharing you with the folks at Buck Run here and even people who don't come to Buck Run. What a wonderful gift and encouragement um, and encourager you are. And Thank you, thank you for using the gifts and allowing the Lord to use you in such a grand way, um, not just at Buck Run, which is a wonderful thing, but in the places he's placed you all along the trail. You've left, you've left tracks, <laughs> and so I'm grateful for that, and uh, may we all be faithful to leave tracks behind us of grace and good news, just like you've done. Well... Thanks to Debbie. Thanks to you all. And uh, I think, Debbie, you're our last pastor's wife. So we finished strong. <laughs> uh, saved the best for last, we could say. But, um, again, hope you reach out to Debbie in some way. You have Please anything do. you want to ask do. about that, uh, any challenges, any needs, I guarantee you she would be delighted mm -hmm. to direct your path in those ways and leave tracks in your life. So blessings, friend. <laughs>